Hi friends, it's Drayton. Welcome to my world. Some of my friends have opened the Overflow Brewing Company. I want to take you inside and show you around and tell you a little bit about Overflow, one of the newest breweries in St. Petersburg. Okay, friends, I'm here inside Overflow Brewing. I'm here with my friends Jessica Hi. and Troy. Hi. Guys, tell me about Overflow. How did this, how did this brewery come about? All right, well, uh, I started off as a home brewer and uh, landed myself a job uh, at another brewery and then eventually became the head brewer there. And then all the while I was still making my own stuff uh, at home and serving at festivals and decided to take the leap and uh, make it my own place. Very cool. Well, you guys want to show me around? Uh, the brew house and sure. see what's going on here at Overflow. So I'll take it by and show you the process here. Sure. Watch the step. So this is what we call a hot liquor tank right here. It's basically a fancy word for hot water. Uh, this is where we just start the brew days. We start heating up water. Uh, this is all filtered water going through. And then we go to the mash tub right here. And this is where we're going to mix it with uh, cracked cranes and hot water. And that's going to uh, activate the enzymes, which convert the starches in the grain to sugar. And what you'll see in there is a false bottom. And that's how we separate the sweet liquid that's created, called wort, uh, and leave the grains behind in the mash tub. So now we'll transfer that from here. We'll go over the oil kettle. And that's where we're bringing up to a boil. That's where we're going to add the hops. Uh, to we have a sweet liquid, we're going to add that hops to add bitterness to balance it out. Uh, we'll also do uh, special things like our sour beers. We'll kettle sour inside here, which is basically introducing the bacteria, which will sour the beer. And then we'll boil it. Run it through the heat exchanger, which brings it from 212 degrees to 65 degrees, and we push it to one of our fermenters. That's what these guys are right here. Those big round top ones with the cone bottom. These are our fermenters. So the beer will sit in here from anywhere from a week to two weeks, sometimes even three weeks. Uh, and it's where it creates alcohol. And then we'll pipe it over one of our little bright tanks right here. It's what's used to carbonate the beer. So it uses pressure uh, in this tank right here. And then uh, we have a little uh, CO2 still right here, which just pumps in uh, diffused CO2. That's going to help carbonate the beer, and then we'll keg it up, and then it uh, goes on tap and gets a drink. Right on. Well, let's go see these taps. Sure. This is something we've kind of been known for. We have Lego taps, and these were all of Troy's childhood Legos. Yes, yeah, so some of them over 25 years old. Yeah. Wow, these are from your childhood. Yeah. Very cool. Sat together with some close friends and drank yeah. some beer, built some Legos. It's kind of become something that we're known for, so we have... Legos out here for people to play with while they're drinking the beer, because all adults need to play with Legos, <laughs> we think. Troy, you have some of the best beers I've ever had. Thank what you. is your, what's some of your favorites up here? What, what's the inspiration for all these beers? Well, right now, uh, one of my favorites, person that's on tap right now, is going to be the E. Watson Brown Ale, which is just a uh, traditional English brown ale. Uh, so very malty, toffee notes, um, dark and roasty, and it's got a nice body to it. So not too thin, but not too thick. Or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's really good. Uh, but what we're really known for is, uh, is a lot of our sours that we make, mm -hmm. which I mentioned earlier, so the kettle sours and stuff like that. Um, so what that involves is we add uh, lactic bacteria to the uh, kettle and sours, we boil it, and then uh, we basically treat it different ways, different fruits or, or, or different kinds of spices and stuff like that. So right now we have uh, one with uh, mojito sour, which was aged on uh, uh, mint and limes. And then we have our lulo fruit, which is a uh, Latin American fruit that we used uh, in that one. And then our dark sour, which was made with dark malt, almost like a stout, uh, and then we soured that, and then we added uh, tart cherries to that guy right there. Wow, cool. I think I'm going to have to try that before I leave today. Yeah. Okay, guys, I am stoked to try these beers out. So what do we got here? Well, we're going to start with the brown ale uh, right there. Oh. That's what I mentioned earlier. That's the E. Watson brown ale. Uh, the E. Watson name actually comes from uh, an old Florida myth or lore of Edgar Watson. Uh, huh. He's a weird character that's uh, I guess was an outlaw west and killed somebody that was a famous outlaw as well and then fled like it was like Oklahoma or something like that and then fled down to Florida uh, wanted to start a sugar plantation down there and ended up killing some people down there too and then when he came back with the equipment for the sugar plantation the people of the town killed him before he got on shore uh, wow. so they, yeah, there's a whole house well, down there and what goes around comes around yeah, yeah. interesting yeah, it's, it's yeah. a traditional um, English brown cool yeah Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 
Oh, that's good. Okay, what do we got next? Um, mojito. The mojito. Mojito yeah. sour. So, you know, based off the uh, the mixed drink, obviously. Um, so we didn't add any Bacardi or rum or anything like that, but it's uh, been aged on uh, mints and uh, limes. Okay. We recently went to the Bacardi factory last week, and uh, the mojito is the oldest mixed drink in the world. Really? Yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, me Interesting. Either. But they were delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have some big news in your lives. Yeah, just got married. Just got married. We did thing. Yeah, so you, you got married, you <laughs> got the, the new brewery, yeah. a lot going on, huh? Oh, yeah. Very cool. So that is an awesome beer. 7.5%. So, so you can't yeah, even tell. It's powerhouse, yeah. You can't even tell. that it, it doesn't taste boozy. No, mm. not at all. Okay, the, the next one. The Lulo Fruits. Uh, it's, uh, we've been going to uh, Latin markets to find... Uh, uh, fruits that we wanted to use, and so we discovered the uh, the Lulo fruits, um, which you can't really get at a lot of grocery stores around here. It's a uh, small orange fruit, but it's green on the inside. Um, it's very citrusy, uh, tropical fruit kind of flavors. Should I taste uh, obviously a lot of citrus? Will it taste like orangey or yeah, grapefruit? yeah, a little bit orangey, a little bit passion fruity, um, kind of a kind of a mix in between there, a little almost rhubarb. Oh my goodness, it's exactly those three things. Yeah. Maybe because you just said it, but it does. <laughs> some rhubarb. Power of suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Excellent. Totally different. Both very fine. Oh my gosh, all three of these. Okay, this is the one that I. That's my favorite. This could be right my. Now. I'm wow. gonna. I'm gonna guess this is gonna be my favorite because yeah. I love cherries. Yes. I love. But it doesn't have that cough medicine cherry taste. No, so we specifically chose uh, tart cherries because a lot of times when you cherry. use cherries in beer. Uh, they come off as kind of like diamond tap medicinal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we wanted to escape that. So using tart cherries also plays with the sour beer as well. And you'll get you know the uh, the same dark notes you get from stout or porter, uh, but it kind of uh, blends into like a uh, chocolate covered tart cherry. Oh man, some of my favorite foods: chocolate right? cherries. And, and the official name of this beer? It's Paracosm. Paracosm, which is an imaginary universe. Hmm. That's very. It is like, this tastes like a cherry dipped in chocolate in liquid form. It's perfect. Yeah. I love that. It's beer. perfect. That's what I'm drinking. So many layers of flavor mm-hmm. going on. It's wow. very complex. Wow. Guys, you're killing it. This Thank is you. awesome. Thank you. Excellent beer. All him and our sister Walter. Yep. Wow. Well, let's do a little moving around in the brewery, show you some other things that's going on here at Overflow. It's very unique in the artwork that's here. Yeah. The beer. You have a unique staff of people that I've known for a, quite some time. Very, very interesting place here. I'm, I am uh, enjoying this very much. Thank you. Yes. Let's check out some of this art. Sure. Sounds good. So tell me about this piece here. So all the artwork in the hallway is by James Olson. You can find him on Facebook or Instagram under Olson Art. He is one of our uh, local artists in the area. He does a lot of murals and shows and body painting and sculptures, all kinds of stuff. So we uh, brought him in to do some work for us and he uh, ended up setting up all this stuff in the hallway just as a favor for us because cool? he thought it was pretty cool. So all this art in the hallway is 3D. Um, we have all these pieces. So it's just some pretty cool, unique wow. stuff that he uh, put up for us and it's really cool to see it in 3D. All in 3D. So you're saying we're going to need these we 3D glasses we to take a look at them. Especially for outside. Yeah. So out here we have uh, a 3D mural by James Wilson. And wow. it's the first 3D mural to uh, be in downtown St. Pete which is really exciting. So, like I said before, we have the 3D glasses inside. You can come inside, grab a beer, grab some glasses, and come look at the artwork. So, what James did was Donkey Kong over here. And then, as you can see, the doors is an old school Game Boy. Um, it all pops out as 3D. We have a galaxy scene, all kinds of cool stuff. This is so cool. Yeah. Wow. James is awesome. Let's see if, I don't know if it's gonna work. Oh, it kind of does. Wow. Let's see. I'll get focus. Well, not really. One of 
our goals here for the brewery was to tie in as much local art as we could. So what we did is the mural over here, and then over on this side we have Justin Siebel, who did another mural for us. So Justin Siebel's uh, Instagram is Melty Skull. You can find his work there. He did a astronaut, a skeleton astronaut brewing. So you can see the um, skeleton is pouring hops into the kettle over here. We have hops over here. Colorful, kind of creepy. Trippy. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. I kind of wanted to showcase the entire like brewing process and like you know, from from basically grains to. to, to it's actually adding them. So uh, this has, these are the drying hops right there. They're just drying them on a rack. This guy's astronaut right here. He's picking them off the vines. It's all done freehand too. There's no stencils, no, uh, no outlines, just all freehand. So Troy, tell me about the 3D art outside. You were telling me a little bit about the technology of color. Yeah, so um, the artist uh, James Olson told me that uh, a while back uh, during the age of Atari that a college professor uh, noticed when he was playing one of the games that the images seemed to be three-dimensional even though they were only two-dimensional. Uh, so he uh, researched it and started doing a lot of work on, uh, on the, art, uh, the, the science of color and light spectrums and found out that uh, blue, black, and red uh, seemed to create this, this visual phenomenon. So blue uh, deepens the background, black is kind of a neutral color, and red will pop to the front, and when those three are combined, you get somewhat of a uh, three-dimensional image. And so if you use a certain filter that's on those 3D glasses, it'll make it stand out even more. Wow, very cool. So tell me about some of the inside art here. The inside art has changed every two months. Uh, we use a local company called Fringe Creative. They change everything around for us. Uh, so it's all local artists from Florida. Um, and we sell it for them. We don't take any commission, of course, but we have the art on display for sale. Um, so you have over here, Steve-O. Um, a couple of his so pieces have already sold, so that's why the wall is kind of blank over here. These ones are interesting. By uh, JP DiCarlo. Over here is our sports corner. So we wanted to kind of set up a living room type atmosphere to be able to watch sports that would also uh, disconnect it from the actual tasting room in case you're not into sports or don't want to hear the TVs. You can go over here, listen to music. Cool. Do whatever you want. Some more pieces by um, Steve-O. Uh, over here are actually from my tattoo artist. Oh, cool. Yeah, J.R. Mitchell. He does that type of work. So we switch it out every couple months. Cool. Keep it fresh. Got some good art. Yeah. When we opened up, we didn't have any coasters, uh, so we basically just used any box that we could and uh, cut coasters. And so many of our patrons decided that they wanted to draw on them, and we told them we'd just go ahead and hang them up because they, a lot of them looked really cool. Well, friends, thanks a lot. And Thank you. Come down and try some of this beer, guys. It's so good. It's worth it. Uh, what's what's the address? Seven seventy. Seven seventy. First Avenue North. Right on. Well. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yes, I love it.